Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is the 31st of August. Wow, I can't believe how fast this month really went. And that is the end of summer for us. Nathan starts school next Tuesday. And so we will be seeing him now only for a couple of hours, a few days a week as we share duties picking him up and his little cousin Harley who will be attending pre-K, I think they call it pre-K B, which is three-year-olds. <laughs> Amazing how fast they grow. Anyway, uh, Nathan will be beginning to wear his little uniform and he looks really handsome. I'll take a picture, show you guys. All right, let's talk about several things. Let me show you the new links on my homepage. This is the photo of my print room and on the lower right of the actual photo, we have the PayPal, please consider donating. Amazon.com, buying site, and Facebook. Thank you so much for all who have responded to the donation link. Every day I see a donation coming in and I, it just, I can't believe it. Thank you so very much. We are shooting big this year and hopefully a Pro 2000 will make it to this room or an Epson P5000. I am not quite sure yet which one I will pick. I'm leaning toward the can and that'll make a lot of people happy. Now, on the Amazon.com, I have set up a bunch of different products. Again, please let me know what you want me to put on there. Now, someone brought up the idea that they can click on the link, go into my Jose Rodriguez page, and then search within that page and order whatever they want and that I would get the commission for it. I'm not sure, I'm not really sure. I've been trying to find the answer to that, but so far I have not been able to find it. So, hey, if you guys are gonna order something through Amazon, go ahead and try that and see if it actually works. I think by the end of the month, I would know if I receive any commissions. You're gonna buy something anyway, just go ahead and do it through my link and see what happens. I'm not entirely sure what will happen, but we'll see. But again, I have put a bunch of my products that I have purchased and that I have featured on my videos on that particular page. Just click on the link for Amazon. It's got the little icon. It says A. Just click on that. Next to it is my Facebook page for this channel. Yeah, that has been kind of weird. I have friended a lot of people who have asked me and they end up posting all sorts of personal, I don't, I don't want to call it garbage, but yeah, it's just personal stuff that does not pertain to the focus of this Facebook page. It's about printing, it's about printers, it's about the subjects that we discuss on my video channel. I gave it a chance and I just had to basically ignore a couple of people. I mean, I did not unfriend them, they're just kind of off my main feed and so if I wish to look at what they're posting I will do that manually but yeah if you're going to send me a friend request please be aware that this is only for photography for printing and printing technology and printers and questions about the same subjects you asked me in my video channel and not about last week's picnic with your dog or whatever you know or you know your last date <laughs> I don't really want to know about your last date, and I don't think everyone else wants to know about your last date either. All right, so that is it for that. Hey, you know that I'm doing this UV spray test where I'm going to compare seven different sprays. And by seven different sprays, I mean by seven different names. Well, someone told me that two of my most professional sprays here are actually identical products under different names sold by different companies. And the reason they suspect that is because most people who have tested those two very popular higher end products have noticed that there is absolutely no difference between the two sprays as far as how they act on the print, how they change or not change the print. So we will see, I'll let you guys know as I continue with this project what those two products are. All right, one more stab at the P600 with auto reset chips. Those are refillable carts 
Remember I told you about that black ink switch lockup. If you try to do an ink change and your auto reset chip is reaching almost empty, it will lock you out. So I discussed a resetter that will not only reset your original OEM cards, which is kind of useless, really, because they absolutely cannot be refilled. Believe me, I have tried. But they also reset the auto reset chips at will, whether they are down to empty or whether they are midway or whatever. Whatever condition they are at, they can be reset on the fly. So you can do all of the cartridges at once. If you're going to do an ink change, okay, a black ink change, make sure that you have enough ink on your cartridge. I would just top everything off. You can do it right on the printer. Just remove the plug, fill, plug, and then you run the cartridges through the resetter, reset them all to full, or take them all out, whatever. Whatever is easiest for you. On my R3000, I have some push button cards, but those have to reach empty. And I have not come across an R3000 auto reset chip resetter yet. If you guys know about that, let me know. And I would love to just be able to top everything off all at once and reset everything on the fly, like you can with the P600 ARC resetter. Okay. Actually, it is marketed as an OEM ink card resetter, but makes no sense whatsoever. But you can do that. And guess who has it available? Ink Owl. So www.inkowl.com has that resetter. It's also available on eBay. So Ink Owl, if you are listening, I would love to test that resetter. Okay. Let me know. All right. Let's talk about the greatest subject about the Pro 1000, Pro 2000, Pro 4000 from Canon, that internal calibrator. It is a densitometer. And why do I need that? What is that for? Why don't I just use a profile, an ACC profile? Well, the calibration of the printer, it is totally separated from an ICC profile or ICM profile totally has nothing to do with that what it does is bring your printer to factory specifications i mean as perfect as you can get that printer to work nothing to do with color management from the computer from icc profiles from your editor whatever okay so what it's doing it is creating a standard condition for pro luster for semi-gloss for gloss 2, for platinum, for whatever, any of the Canon papers that you are able to feed through this printer and are able to find on the drop-down menu, you can create internal calibrations for that paper. So, why do I need this? Well, somebody brought up the question, is it possible that down the line somehow, this printer can drift? In other words, the output Disregarding ICC profiles, remember, we are just, if I could press a button and print a sample, that's what we're talking about. We are disconnected from the computer totally. If I could show that six months from now, there is a slight difference between a, say, a standard print. Say, for instance, this had an internal hard drive like the big boys do, and I print a sample print. It would be a standard image loaded into that hard drive and output it through the printer itself with no influence from the computer. And I put this aside and six months from now, I'm using OEM inks, I'm using the same paper types, everything is the same, but I get slightly different results. That means that somehow, somewhere, there was a drift. What can a drift be? I have no clue, okay, it could be you know, something wearing out. It could be a slight change in the ink batch. It could be a different paper batch, whatever. It could be mechanical. But there is a drift that you can actually visualize between your original test print that you ran when you initialized the printer and one six months later or a year later or two years later. So that is what the calibration is for. If that occurs and you do see the difference, then you would run a second calibration for the condition the printer is 
in now and the paper you are using now and the ink batch you are using now. So that will bring that printer back to a factory condition. In other words, not a factory condition, but a standard condition that will match that original condition, take into effect any changes that took place within that six month or a year or two years time or different inks from Canon or different paper batches from Canon, there will be some changes. They cannot produce batch after batch after batch and have it be identical. They cannot do that. So there will be changes and your printer's mechanics also slightly change as the printer just continues churning out prints. So, oh, well, I'll just redo my ICC profile. No, don't do that. Don't do that at all. The ICC profile does not live here. It lives over there and it's dependent on your computer and your computer monitor and its calibration, okay? Don't do that. You don't need to do that. So at the very beginning, I set up the printer and I calibrate it to a paper. And then I create an ICC profile for that paper, which then lives on my computer. Six months later, I noticed that that internal print I created out of the printer, okay, no longer looks like the original one six months ago, a year ago, okay? So there has been an internal drift. It could be, like I said, the printer, it could be paper batch changes, it could be ink batch changes. It could be many different things. So I need to bring that printer back to a correct condition by recalibrating it, okay? And that will take into effect and it will correct for any drifts, any paper changes, any differences in ink patch. Once I put that printer in the condition it was at, at the beginning of this timeline that we are talking about, my ICC profile that I created at this point will still produce identical results, okay? At this, a year later, the printer has changed, the inks have changed, the paper has changed. No, I don't want to create a new profile. That's a separate entity, okay? I need to recalibrate the printer, make it come back to the original condition it was at at the very beginning of its printing life in my room. So that is it. And you continue recalibrating every six months, every year, whatever you think is necessary. Your ICC profile, you don't need to ever change it, okay? You don't need to ever change it. So that is it. That was a good discussion that I had with someone and they explained it to me and I thought, wow, that makes complete sense. That is what this is for. It's not for you to be able to create printer profiles. No, there's no such thing as a printer profile. Printer calibration. Profiles live over there. Calibrations live internally, all right? And all it's doing is bringing everything back to a certain condition, bringing everything back to a certain condition. Whatever that condition is, that's what you're doing. You are taking into account a slight drift and you're bringing it back in. That's it. Thank you so much. Again, keep watching. Today I was watching my analytics and man, there's a lot of people watching videos. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I think this month by tomorrow, when we get the last of the month estimates for income, I think I hit it out of the ballpark. I'm gonna finally break $500 a month. I went from about $100, $110 a month, maybe only a year ago. So that's pretty, pretty awesome. Again, it's all due to you guys and your support and uh, I'll add that to the income from Patreon and the income from PayPal. And possibly in the future, if the Amazon works out, add that together and we'll be able to get whatever we want. Whatever you guys tell me to test, I'll be able to get. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.